And here is that agenda, the military mission statement of a right-wing think tank, the Project for the New American Century. Written a year before 9-11, it's supported by key members of the current Bush administration. The drafting was supervised by uh, Cheney, uh, by Donald Rumsfeld, by Paul Wolfowitz, by Jeb Bush, who's the president's younger brother, and by Lewis Libby, who's Cheney's chief of staff. This is about control over Middle East oil. It indicates that America is aiming for global leadership, uh, both military and economically. And what it says, I think, is chilling. It says if we are going to transform America into tomorrow's dominant force, that's their phrase, then it's going to be a long process unless there is a catastrophic and catalyzing event dash like Pearl Harbor. So, what happened? Well, September 11th happened, obviously, and George W. Bush had to rethink. But for many of those around Bush, there was no rethink. There didn't have to be. Long before September 11th, a small, influential group of neoconservatives here in Washington had wanted to see the United States transformed into a sort of benevolent ruler, unchallenged, astride the world. And long before George W. Bush was elected, they sat down and they wrote down a manifesto. The document was effectively a charter of the Project for a New American Century, a neoconservative think tank in Washington. The founding members included Donald Rumsfeld, Dick Cheney, uh, Wolfowitz, Paul Wolfowitz of the Defense Department, uh, Richard Pearl, head of the uh, Defense Advisory Board, um, Louis Libby, Cheney's chief of staff, uh, very, uh, John Bolton, Under Secretary of State for uh, Arms Control, uh, Ellie like Cohen, uh, who's on the Defense Policy Board. Much of what these men wanted is coming true. They urged that the U.S. abandon the anti-ballistic missile treaty. It has. They wanted establishment of more permanent U.S. military bases abroad. That is happening in the Philippines and in Georgia and will likely happen in Iraq. They urged regime change as a goal of foreign wars, not just in Iraq. They wanted the U.S. as a global constabulary, their word, unburdened by the U.N. or world opinion, preventing any challenge to U.S. dominance. But, they wrote, a year before September 11th, such aspirations are unlikely to be realized without a catastrophic and catalyzing event, like a new Pearl Harbor. The United States of America is the most powerful nation on Earth. In itself, this goes a long way to explaining the things it does around the world. At present, it's conducting a war on terror, or more accurately, a campaign against opposition to US domination. Others prefer to call it the beginnings of the Third World War. The United States has an insatiable appetite for conflict. And since going into Korea in the 1950s, it's been at war with someone or other in some corner of the globe non-stop right up to the present day. This drive is now led by the weapons manufacturers themselves. It's a highly dangerous precedent. I call it war corporatism. It is the door of a new fascism being pushed open. And don't be fooled, not all fascism looks like Adolf Hitler. The reality, as we see from the Iraqi invasion, is that the presidency has been captured by the most powerful elements of this corporatism. And this ghastly molecule aims to turn the world into its very own enslaved global market. And the plan is well underway. 
The attack by Al Qaeda on the World Trade Center is just one response to it. Is this a conspiracy? Quite the opposite. It is a high profile project known as the Project for the New American Century. People like Dick Cheney, Donald Rumsfeld, Richard Pearl are the major players among politicians, right wing thinkers, militarists, and industrialists in the creation of the project. The project is a neo conservative manifesto which includes in its toolbox the unbridled use of war in clearing a path for US interests. The will to attack Iraq came entirely from this visible yet sinister group. September the 11th was merely the pretext. Bush is merely the figurehead. And so, who's next, you wonder? Iran? North Korea? France? Britain? None of us really matter to them.